Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm here today with Jeannie Dietrich, who is the founder of Armand Dietrich, as well as the founder of Spin Sucks Pro, which is a professional development site for PR and marketing pros, and she's also the co-author of Marketing in the Round. Jeannie is also the author of PR, the PR and marketing blog Spin Sucks, which is an award-winning blog. To name a few of the awards, it's a 2012 Sizian Top 100 blog, the 2010 and 2011 Reader's Choice Blog of the Year, a Top 42 Content Marketing Blog from June to 42, a Top 10 Social Media Blog from Social Media Examiner, and an Ad Age Power 150 Blog. Basically, it's an awesome blog that you need to follow, and Jeannie obviously knows what she's talking about. Uh, you can also find her as a co-host of Inside PR, a weekly podcast about communication, social media, and where they all meet and intersect. And today, we are here to learn from Jeannie on the best types of content you may not have thought of yet. Jeannie, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted after hearing that. Jeannie, <laughs> make it sound like I don't sleep or something. <laughs> well, I mean, geez, Louise, when, when I was putting this together, I was like, it just goes on. And I was like, well, I, I, but I, was like, I can't leave that one out. Well, I can't leave that one out. And I mean, geez. I oh, should shorten she that too. <laughs> no, no, you just need to keep adding to it. And, 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 mm. I, and if you keep doing what you're doing, you will. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I thought the same thing, but I just couldn't leave any of them out. They're all so impressive. But uh, obviously, it brings credit to that to what you have to say and and uh hopefully everyone uh, you know really pays attention because um you know you're you're on the cutting edge of everything and and today we're help, we're going to help people uh learn more about uh different types of content because as we all know um you know content marketing you know just like any other field it gets crowded and you just need yep. to stay yep. on top of the game and and yep. that's what it, yep. it's going to come down to the ones who are successful are the ones who are you know doing the right and better things so that's what we're here to talk about. I'm excited. I'm excited to learn. I'm very, very excited to learn from you today. Yeah, says the content marketing expert. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. At least, uh, at, least at least in my own mind. But uh, you know, it's from learning from people like you. So uh, oh, nice. it's it's a, it's a fun field. It's so much fun. And uh, it's and, super and, fun. You. Yeah. I absolutely. remember my dad said to me when I graduated from college with an English degree and went into PR. He was like. I don't understand why you're going into PR. I feel like you should be a writer. And fast forward a few years, I won't say how many, but a few. Um, you now I have the opportunity to write every day as part of my job, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, and I love your style too. I love your style. Oh, thanks. It, it, it's very just fun and light, but boom, it hits it hits home on some things. So, well, which is probably why you, you got these uh, these uh, all these awards. You know, you keep it fun and technical, so it's cool. Uh, very cool. Yeah, we yeah, we like so, to write things, snarky things in parentheses. We'll like write the thing, and then I like to put in parentheses, parentheses my snarky comment. <laughs> <laughs> but it, hey, it, it adds your flavor and it adds your yeah. personality. Yeah. So it, it's fun. <laughs> so where do you want to start today? What do you, what do you uh, what's what's on your mind as far as uh, you know some some things, some different types of doing content that you know people might not have thought of. Obviously, we're all very familiar with you know the written blog, which you know sure. as yep. as simple as I mean as you know, recent as what seven, eight years ago wasn't even thought of. So it's not, you know, it's yep. not like it's archaic, but it's um, it's still something I think most people are familiar with. And you know, you hear about doing videos and stuff like that. But but talk to us. Tell tell us what else is out there that some, someone might you know not have really considered yet. Well, my big thing right now is virtual reality content, which we've talked about, and I think you know it's it's not. Um, accessible to everyone yet, but I will tell you that I started seeing Shell Israel and Robert Scoble talking about it last year. And I remember at the time thinking, like, oh my gosh, one more thing and how are we going to do this? And yeah. it was, oh, what? And now, you know, video has to be 360. Like it just, at, last year, it just sort of blew my mind and I couldn't, couldn't wrap my arms around it. And there's still, the, those two gentlemen are still talking about it. And what changed my mind was Vision sent me um, a Google Cardboard reader, which looks like the old, um, what were they called? You know the, oh, yeah. the things that you would use that you'd yeah, click? Yeah, you, you would circle, click it and they would go to something else. Through, the viewfinder yeah. things. What were they called from well, Mattel? Were those? They were red, right? Yeah. They were red. And then you'd um, stick it in and you could click through the different pictures? Yeah, yeah, those. Uh, I think everybody anyway, knows what we're know talking about. about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's what it looks like, but it has a little slot in the back that you put your phone in. So then you download okay. the Google Cardboard app and you can actually walk through certain things. So like 
on the Google Cardboard app, they have... So you put um, your phone inside of it. You put your phone inside of it, and you've got the app, and then you open the app, and then you put the viewfinder up to your face. Okay. Um, so they have, like, under the sea. So you can, like, you'll be walking as if you're walking on the bottom of the ocean, and then you look up, and you can see a shark, and you look down, and you see seaweed, and you look to the left, and you see um, Dorian Nemo, and you look right, and you see penguins. I, I, not penguins, but you know what I mean? I mean... So you have this opportunity to sort of just get this 360 feel of what's around you. I mean, going through a museum or um, walking through the zoo or going to a movie. So it's, you know, it has that 360 view. I will say, however, that the technology is not quite ready because it makes mm -hmm. you very car sick. Yeah, now, now this is similar uh, to it feels like. Now, is, this, is that the only way to view this kind of content? Like, is that from the, uh, you know, say you're a marketing company or a, a you know if you have a marketing department you know within a company and you're putting this out and you're trying to get engagement and trying to get it to people who are going to view this stuff right do they have to have something like that to view or is it viewable on like a desktop or do you have to go through like that to to really experience what you know the marketer is trying to let you experience Right now, you do have to have the viewfinder or the, you know, the, the goggles or whatever you want to call them. Um, mm -hmm. I know that there is some 360 video that you can see on YouTube just on your desktop, but it's not the same experience. Experience, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it definitely is not accessible to everyone yet. And I think there's mm -hmm. two ways you could go about it. You can buy a 360 camera, which mm -hmm. isn't inexpensive. It's not, you know, but you're going to buy it once. And then you can create content. So let's say that you're at a trade show and you want to give people an experience that they wouldn't necessarily get if they there weren't. There. Like, let's say you go to CES, you're at the Consumer Electronics Show, and you're walking through, like, I don't go to that show, but, man, I'd love to see some of that. And to have that experience of walking through and seeing all the grandeur and glory and all of that that happens at that show. Mm -hmm. um, or we have a client that makes oxidizers, which is not a sexy business. But for the people that are in the business, they are really intrigued by how an oxidizer is put together because they come, they're about the size of three football lengths, and they come on seven or eight semis, and then they put it all together. And it's large enough that a, a person can walk through it. So, how, you know, for that audience, being able to walk through the oxidizer and show, like, this is how this works, and this is where this connects, and this, you know, this is what, how this sucks this out. And, you know, so it's not super sexy, but it gives people the opportunity to see something they wouldn't necessarily ever get to see. Um, mm -hmm. And you can do that from a really unsexy B2B perspective or definitely from a very sexy consumer perspective. No, I hear you. I hear you. Now, I'm just trying to wrap my brain around, you know, because I, I come from a sales uh, background, and then as of, you know, eight to ten years, I, you know, really applied my marketing side. And uh, so I, I always think of things in both ways. Like, how does this tie together? You know, this is really nice, but will it drive engagement, which I think that it always comes down to driving revenue, you know, so, yep. you know, yep. at the very yep. end. Of course, yep. there's all these touch points, but at the very end, it's that, right? So, um I was just as you're talking, and as I've done some research on this, and 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 I, you know, I really was, you know, from an application level, I was like, well, how, how? I can't wait to see what she says. And you touched on a couple of things that I think, you know, right now can be done. It's not. It doesn't seem like it would be for the everyday company, but if you are at a trade show, and that just sounds like a phenomenal time to use this, you know. If uh, and there's, you know hundreds and hundreds there's tens of thousands of people who go put to trade shows so this right. seems like if you got something you know you're already investing all this money to go to a trade show right so right. to to do this that i i think if for the listeners out there who are going to trade shows this is something to very much consider because you could have your own one view like a, a professional viewfinder you don't need the cardboard box right so right. you could do right. you could do that and then you could really give uh, somebody an experience of like like how that how that looks, you know, like hey, you know, for whatever, here's our technology. Here's you know, here's get get inside of the technology or you know, and I saw I read your blog about like the cram or I, I don't know if I read about you about the cranberry, how cranberries and 
or juice is yep. made and all yep. this stuff. Like, yep. Was that you? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Like, like, you know, even like that, if you're a company who is, um, you know, that, that does that or wine shows or whatever, let's show how, and you know, and just, that just gives people an extra feeling and that, you know, those feelings go a long way. And something else I'd like to get your opinion on. And another thing that just popped in my brain, another application for this right now is um, for bigger ticket sales, you know, a sales team could send that thing that you got. And, yep. again, um, Jeannie, what's the name of the blog? You did a very good breakdown of how that worked uh, so people can reference that again. Do you have an easy way uh, for it? Yeah, it's Google Cardboard. So if you, just go, if you just Google Google Cardboard, you can see you'll find – you can buy the viewfinder. I think it's like $20. Okay. Um, so, so if you think, so think about it from this perspective, going on what, going, building on what you were saying. If you buy that for your, you, your sales team buys that for your top 50 customers or your top 20 prospects or whatever you decide to do, and it's 20 yeah. bucks each, and then you just send them this. You can brand it. You can, you know, yeah. You can put your, put a sticker on it. You, you can put your logo on it. You can do whatever you want to it because it's yeah. cardboard. You can do whatever you want to it. Um, and then send it as a as a gift, like Cision did with me. Send it as a gift, and then you just say, "Download the Google Cardboard app on your phone, iPhone or Android, and stick your phone in there and check it out." Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that that's something like right now because I was having a hard time uh, when I was researching this, um, like thinking, well, you know, I mean, you're going to hit like 0.1 percent of the audience who can who can actually see what all this work you put all this money right. into the video right. and we'll get in we'll right. get into that right. here in a second. But then it just dies just kinda like because nobody has the back end part to use it. But right. if yep. you're proactive about it, i.e. at a trade show or your top twenty five fit it depend I mean again, this is gonna be for people who are selling something that it makes it worthwhile. But again there's of course. Right. tens of thousands of companies out there who it would make sense for that for their top fifty customers rather than send them a gift basket, send them this. And um, you can even put it together for them, you know, and, and send it in a little bit larger box or something. But, yeah, okay, okay. Now I'm really starting to kind of see some, some real-life uh, examples of, of how, how there's some uses of it. Can, can you think of anything else for people right now until this becomes more mainstream? Um, I'll, I'll, although those are some pretty big points, though. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, that's, that's probably the biggest thing that I can see right now. Okay. Um, remember when the before everybody had cameras on their phones and they there there was that flip camera that was about the size of a of an iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, they don't they don't they no longer exist, but you could buy that flip camera for like sixty nine dollars. And I remember clients were um, branding them, you know, and engraving their logos on them and sending them to customers and saying, "Hey, we'd love we, we'd love to give this to you. Would you set it on your desk?" take a video of yourself giving us a testimonial and you can keep the camera. So there mm -hmm. was lot, I mean, I sort of see it in that same way of it's not, yeah. it's not going to be something that drives sales today, but it's going to be something that's memorable enough that people are going to say, wow, that was really cool, a really cool experience. And when I'm ready to buy from them, they did yeah. something different than anybody else. Yeah. Better than hiring, uh, you know, again, there's tons and tons of amazing marketing companies out there, but there's also tons and tons of hacks out there who say they're they're SEO Correct. experts and <laughs> pay me a thousand dollars so I again have you rank for these terms. You know, right, that's such a right. dead thing these days. So don't pay those guys, <laughs> and instead take that thousand or you know two thousand dollars and do this. You know. Um, that, that I think that'll move the needle a hundred times more um, because people cannot forget about the the rifle approach when it comes to sales and marketing. You right, know, the right. Shotgun yep. approach is obviously needs to be out there, but don't forget the other side of it um, because this is a phenomenal way. And God, talk about man, talk about separating yourself, right? I mean, if you did this to somebody and your competitor is, is sending them, you know, right, emails right. versus this, you know, I mean, right. you're going to just kill it. So, yeah, I'm so glad we're, we're, we're talking about this. Now, now, and now, how do you get started with this? If, if you, so you, you're bought in, you're listening to this, and you're like, okay, yeah, I want to do this. Okay, t let's walk through. How does somebody get started? So you either have to buy a 360 camera. Or okay. you hire you hire a developer, outsource to a developer who can build something for you. Now, a um, developer or like a videographer? 
a, a developer because they'd have to actually build the back end for you um, okay. and create the create the opportunity for you to build this for yourself. So I would say okay. if you're just starting out, you know, take the plunge and buy the 360 camera. It's not going to be something that's going to be around forever for you to use. You know, you'll probably use it for a year or two before the technology replaces it. But that's where I would start. And then I really would think about, you know, just buying Google Cardboard for, you know, your priority list mm -hmm. and, and check it out, test it out. Okay. So that that's basically it. If you're going to be going, getting going VR, you just need to, you know, obviously look into this, the Google Cardboard thing. I think there's something called Oculus Rift out there, but that's, what, what's yep. the cost of something like that? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Okay, so yeah. don't do that. Let, let's start with the Google Cardboard <laughs> thing. Get right. them in bulk. Put them together. Brand them with you know some whatever you can, you can do. Um, you know, send some like a little postcard or written instructions. Download this app, right, and then hold it up and enjoy. You know, it could be like yep. a one, two, three step kind of yep. process. And, yep. that, and that's that's basically it. Do you have any suggestions on? We say hire developer again. That's another scary thing, you know, when it comes to finding good or bad people. Do you have any? Right. Um, do you have any uh, advice for people on on finding somebody who you know would, you know, good places to find this, or is it just like, hey, you know, that's kind of up to you to find good developers out there. Do you have any advice on that? I wish I did because developers yeah. are so hard. You know, they're either really creative and terrible at the project management side or they're just flaky all over or it's such a – because there's such a low barrier to entry in the industry, it's really hard to find somebody that's good. So I wish I had some magic yeah. potion. I was just actually talking to a client about that very thing this morning, and there's not yeah. – there's not, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. And I was kind of almost asking for myself, too. <laughs> That's another thing. You just <laughs> never know. There's certain things out there that you just – PR is another one, you know. You, yep. It just comes yep. down to, you yep. know, and, and then you find good ones, and you get, like, an amazing bang for your buck. And you find bad ones, and you just get hosed. But it's just yep. that's just life, right? So, yeah. So, yeah, unfortunately, there's no there's no easy answer. But once you get your hands around a good developer, treat them right, be nice to them, pay them right, and, and you'll get your money's worth. All right. Well, cool. Uh, do you have anything else you want to kind of dig into on the on the VR? Uh, it, it's virtual reality content, but it also goes by VR content. VR. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else? Any any tips, pointers? Anything else you want to no, touch on there? No, I don't there? think so. But yeah, okay. I would really, you know, I would test it out. It's it's pretty cool. And even if you even if you just want to buy yourself a Google Cardboard and just download, download the Google Cardboard app on your phone and test it out. I mean, it's 20 bucks, right? I mean, it's nothing. Like, you may as well just buy it and test it out and see. Because I didn't truly – like, I started to understand it, but I didn't truly get it until mm -hmm. I got the viewfinder and stuck my phone in it. And then I was like, oh. So no. I highly recommend just going that, that route, and then you can really figure out, okay, now I can see how we would use this. From a content that, that is a great piece of advice, and and just to add to that, just from again my sales side of things, you don't have to have um, you know a, a you know a video of 360 v view of the ocean. You know, you can just do right. set right. if you have a good developer, you can just do your sales presentation. You know, look yep. left. That's a great idea. About, yep. Do this. Look up. We also offer this. Look right. We do this. Look down. This is how you contact us. You know, something like that. You don't have to do like some. You don't have to have some magical product. You could just have your own sales presentation um, on there. You know, so, so yeah. But but uh, to really be able to figure that out, you, you probably need to you know take Jeannie's advice and and um, get you know get it and see it and then like yep. oh, okay 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 yeah. I get it now yeah. here we go right it's okay, pretty cool. cool. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, and uh, like I was talking to my partner, I was like, I'm you know I'm really excited to talk to Jeannie just in general, but I'm also really excited to learn about this. And uh, and I uh, I've already learned a lot, and, and my brain's already clicking on on how to, how to how cool, to take good. advantage of this. Good. Yeah, very cool. All right, uh, let's um, keep going on. You know, different types of content that you know people may not have thought of yet. And again, some of these things that you might have thought about, but. Um, you know, there's probably bits and pieces of, of doing it a different way that, that you might not have thought about. Um, so uh, what else What else would do you uh, suggest people think about? Um, I would say that one of the big pushes that we have had for probably the last year and a half is finding ways to repurpose your content, but not repurpose your content in terms of 
um, you know, taking your blog post and making an, taking a series of blog posts and making an ebook. That for sure should happen. But what I'm talking about is um, using media outlets and blogs to extend and amplify what you're you're doing. So let's say that you've done you have a blog post on, you know, for me, it would be like PR metrics. So how do you measure P your PR efforts? And that's a big, big sticking point for me because to your point earlier, there's there's so many PR professionals who don't measure their efforts and sort of, it's the, it, my industry is the same. Like it's, though there's a very low barrier to entry, anybody can say they're a PR person. There's no certification or anything. So you get, you run into probably nine really horrible PR pros to every one good one. And so one of my mm -hmm. big focus, focuses is on how you measure that so that as you're looking for a PR professional or a PR firm, you can ask the right questions about measurement. Mm -hmm. So let's say I've written a series of blog posts on Spin Sucks about um, PR metrics, and now I want to go out into the world and make sure that, our, that the business owners, business leaders are seeing that. So I'll go to Forbes and I'll go to Inc and I'll go to Mashable and I'll go to All Business and I'll go to Open Forum and I'll write content for them and then link back to my PR metrics post on Spin Sucks. So not only is it getting me that media relations traditional PR boost, it's giving me the link back to my blog, which helps with search engine optimization. And suddenly when somebody said, types in, how do I measure PR? into Google, even if it's not spin sucks, it's something that I've written. So then I've become the expert. So that's what we've really been focused on for the last, I would say year and a half or almost two years, is how to repurpose it in other ways like that so that you can get the bigger bang for the buck, amplify your content and become the expert. You know, you could totally own the first page of Google results, even if it's in different publications, it's still you as the author. Um, so, so basically that's, that's take a big, that, big that loaf of bread and, and slice it up and, and mm -hmm. do little little mm -hmm. bites here and there so that yep. people can, yep. yeah. Yeah, yep. I, uh, from our end, yeah, I've no, we've uh, noticed the same thing. Uh, there's bits and pieces of a video that are interesting, right? And so just carve out those, and then if people want to hear the rest of it, just at the end of that video, say, you know, take a, you know, a 15-minute video and make a two-minute piece of out of it. And right, then, right. So, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah, uh, and I, I think that, that that's something that I think everyone really needs to kind of almost re-listen to or, you know, really pay attention about because you can ch – I mean, you start – you know, part of the challenge of content marketing is coming up with new ideas, right? Yes. So, I mean, your new ideas have already happened, you know? Yes. Just go back yes. and repurpose that yes. stuff by yes. – not the same thing. Don't just start sending it out all over again. Just Just change it up, you know, carve it out. Take bits and sound bites and pieces, yep. and you know, yep. and, and yep. get it out there. And yeah, we've noticed, um, uh, you know, specifically when we did a, a video for, you know, what's the printing cost, uh, you know, and it was a longer video. But then part of that video was cost-saving tips. I mean, tell me that that's not interesting. Just that part, it's right? Huge. Yes. So, yeah. So we just took that little bit out of it, and that alone is driving about a third of a third more, a third of the amount of traffic the other one. The other one still brings in more because it's been out there for four years, right? But the other one, mm -hmm. that is bringing in about a third, but 30, 33% more traffic, right? I mean, that's that's amazing, right? That's so, amazing, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and if, to your point, just just do do more of that. You know, just go get it out there. And uh, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's – I, I've seen it on a personal level, and um, you know, we, we, I mean, that's we need to do it more, you know, for all of our clients. But um, yeah, that's 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 awesome. That that is awesome. And then to that point is also you know audio, video type of stuff too, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And one of the things we've been testing. So uh, you mentioned that I co-host Inside PR, which is a podcast. And one of the things that we've been testing is um, we've been recording it on Zoom, which creates high qual or high definition video and audio and it separates the tracks for you so you can have video and audio separate. Whoa. So we've been testing um yeah, it's super easy. Um doing the podcast as normal but then uploading the video and right now it's just the three of us recording this the show. But because so many people are visual learners. They love it. They're eating it up. And all we're doing is taking that audio track of the literally of the three of us recording <laughs> the podcast yeah. and sticking it in embedding it on the blog and people are eating it up. So you that's such your an efforts. easy way. 
Yeah. What that? It, you just tripled your efforts. You know, well, yeah, the same easily. effort. Yes. And you get yes. three times. You can work less now, right? Yes. yes. Exactly. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's oh, that's awesome. What's that called again? Zoom. Z o. It's z o o m dot u s. Zoom. I think it's one fifty nine a year or something like that. It's not. It's well worth the money. Yeah, that's another thing. See, always learning, always learning here. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. I'm, make, I'm making notes, not not for more questions. I'm making notes to to go apply stuff. To later. do stuff. <laughs> I'm giving you homework. <laughs> you are giving me homework. Yeah, you're giving me more work. But at the end of the day, it may, it, it'll it'll create less at the end of the day. Okay, cool. All right. Um, keep, man, I'm I'm intrigued. What else you got? A anything oh else God. out there that you can think of? What, what about digging into a little bit of a interactive content? I know that's not the newest term of the world, but I, I will tell you that not everybody is doing it. You know. Yeah, um, and we're not really even doing it, at least not very well. Um, mm -hmm. We've, you know, we're testing some things. We do that what, what I call the Stimplex Inquisition every Friday, and it's just an interview where we ask the same questions, and until. Three weeks ago, we were doing it just written. So I would send the questions to a person, and they would answer them, and it was just a blog post, right? So we we mm -hmm. started testing it on Blab, um, mm -hmm. and I I asked the same questions, but then we've also incorporated a game in the middle, um, and people are eating that up too. So What's it's, the game? So Describe then, course, the game. It's the five second rule that Ellen De DeGeneres does. So I do the I do the Q and A, and then. Um, when somebody from my team pops on and <laughs> asks the question, so I don't know what the questions are, and mm -hmm. it's, you have to you have to answer you have to give name three things in five seconds. So like oh goodness, yeah, that's hard. The question I got stuck on last week was name three love songs in five seconds, and I was like, oh man, Journey, yeah. Air Supply. <laughs> I couldn't come up with a song. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but I'm, we're I'm, testing I'm that. We're testing that on Blab to do some of that interactive engagement kind of stuff. So How's it working people seem for to you? like it. Yeah, people people seem to like it. Okay. I don't. Yeah, like I know it, we all but... got to get better at this stuff. The tools are there. Yeah. Then it just comes yeah. to being creative. And and one thing I'd like to kind of just throw out for the listeners and 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 possibly for you, for you to to move on. Uh, you mentioned earlier like how to measure your PR efforts, right? Mm -hmm. To mm -hmm. to come up with a really cool interactive calculator. You know, um, of course, it wouldn't be a traditional-looking calculator. I mean, it would be traditional, you know, possibly interface of a calculator, but you wouldn't have one, two, three, four, five. You know, you know, you would have, you know, enter, you know, what oh, you've done here, enter this, I've never you know, thought of that. yeah, enter this, enter that, and then boom, at the end of the day, now calculate, right? Um, huh. Yeah, I think I think that would go a long way for you. That's to a get great the word out. idea. Yes. Yeah, that's a great yeah, idea. There, there you go. Uh, return the favor for you. So, but now, and now, so take that idea. You can apply that all over the board. Uh, one idea, just again to kind of get people's brain spinning on this, is we we did an interactive piece of content for, um, you know, we handled the marketing for a printing company, and um, we, you know, a big question kept being asked over and over and over and over again is how do I, you know, what's the spine width? What's the spine width? You know, what's the spine? So we created a, you know, here's the click your paper, click the page count, you know like the you know the paper weight the paper type and then boom it just spits out the spine width right love it that, that, love it yeah love it. so so that's just like so you can think pr efforts and then we're also going to be doing an interact you know just, again i'm just throwing ideas so because there's so many different industries are like well it doesn't apply to me and that's almost never the correct answer um like for you know people who are hiring people let us show you how much money you can make if you make this sale and that sale and that sale so then you get people intrigued that way so there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it again you're going to have to find a good developer i, I wish Jeannie would have given me hers <laughs> for all her secrets <laughs> but you got to you got to keep the, you got to keep those on uh, you know you got to have some secrets you keep back right so um, you cannot but, have anybody from my team <laughs> But uh, you got to find a good developer because this stuff's not easy. Now I'm not gonna lie, um, but uh, if you do get a good one, it it will be worth its weight in gold. Um, yeah, and, and totally you, agree you know, with that. So yeah, cool. Um, any other <laughs> interactive things you've seen out there? You know, games. Uh, you you enter. You know, I mentioned the calculator. Um, there's contests you can do. I'm, I'm almost asking for myself here. Uh, any anything you've seen out there that's really you know been cool for you? You know, I am 
I'm a cyclist and I live in Chicago, which is the worst possible place you can live when you're a cyclist um, because you can't Except ride outside. <laughs> but at least in San Francisco, you can ride outside and you're getting a really good hill workout. Yeah. <laughs> right? But, like, I can't ride outside between usually October and, and April. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible. So I just I discovered this app, this Peloton app, in, I don't know, last summer sometime. And so I started using it for winter training this, this winter. And I'm really fascinated with how they are sort of – engaging and interacting with people around the globe who have downloaded this app to their phone or to their tablet and are taking cycling classes hmm. from New York City. So the way they've got it set up is they have a studio in New York and they have actual spin classes. Um, and then they just live stream them. And you oh. can either join them live or you can do on demand. Um, cool. They're bringing on – like for me, this is totally nerdy, but they're bringing in um, pro cyclists once a month to teach classes. So like George Hincapi is this Saturday. Genius. I'm like, Genius. I know it's freaking amazing. Yes. Um, and the other thing they're doing is because February always tends to be like, you know, everybody January comes and everybody does their New Year's resolutions. And even if you, you work out consistently like I do because I race and all that, like I'm, but February always tends to be that horrible month where you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't keep going. I can't be outside yeah. yet. And I've been inside forever. So they created this contest with their thousands of app users to see who can rack up the most miles in February. So oh my God. guess what I'll be doing for every yeah. single moment of every day. <laughs> That's genius on so many levels. One, right? you get the, you have the people who are authorities, right? And then you have, then you just tap into the psychology of a competitive yep. person. And yep. if you're going to be yep. doing biking, and yep. then you're obviously competitive, and then yeah, golly, that that yep. see stuff like that yep. from just my marketing side. When I see good ideas, I don't know, I just get excited. <laughs> I'm just yep. like, oh, that's amazing, yep. so smart, right? So yeah, that 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 is awesome. That is awesome. Well. Uh, yeah, anything else to close on? I mean, we've covered a lot. And just to kind of recap, you know, we have the VR content. Uh, we've, we've showed some ideas of how people can use it now, um, you know, and just kind of a wait and see for, you know, mainstream stuff. But um, mm -hmm. you, don't, you shouldn't have to wait if you're a proactive, you know, sales or marketing team. Uh, you know, we've given some interactive content ideas, um, obvious, and then we've also talked about taking your current content and, and breaking it up. If it's a written blog, you can break it up. Uh, if you have a podcast or a video, take little sound bites and, you know, and also like, you know, 30-second ones, for, especially for Facebook, the way they've really kind of zeroed in on like that 30-second video. Um, you know, go, go there with it, um, and uh, and obviously, you know, using some tools like that Zoom.us can do all this for you right now, so you don't have to go back later and, right. and do it. So, yeah, I, I think we've given um, we've given the the listeners out there some some really good stuff, real tangible stuff they can take home. And, and Jeannie, I really really appreciate on a personal level from learning from you, and, and I'm sure everybody else will appreciate. Um, you know, this as well. And, and again, I know I mentioned, you know, some of the, you know, awards and, and what you're, you're in charge of, but can you tell everybody the best ways to follow you, to continue to learn from you moving forward? I can, but I have a question for you first. Yes. <clears throat> Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Making a murderer guilty or not? <laughs> not guilty. Totally guilty. Totally, totally not guilty. guilty. I know totally we were guilty. tweeting at each other the other day about this. <laughs> I, I I thought so highly of you, and, and I, I still do, but I, I do have a question mark now because I, I don't quite understand why. Totally did it. They why, totally how, did did it. You, how do you say that? I mean, there's so many things. Did you see that news thing from BuzzFeed about a week or so ago? No, I didn't see. I don't well, pay let me, let me But let I did you know. see the People no, Magazine thing. All right, oh, I'll would, go look uh, at Let BuzzFeed. me let you know this. No, no, no. It was from Reddit. It might oh, have been on BuzzFeed, Reddit. but a Redditor found it. I can't remember if it was Reddit or BuzzFeed who we heard about. What well, doesn't matter. But I, I think a Redditor uh, found it, and uh, they had a, the picture of her, one of the recent pictures, and they yes. zoomed in on her keys that she had in her hand. Do you or do you not think it was that one single key they found, or was it a whole keychain worth of keys? 
I'll just answer for you. It was all. It was a bunch of keys. I, I'm sure it was. Yeah. Yes. And now it's just oh, another. I, I have no indictment. doubt that they. I have no doubt that they planted evidence and that. But I do think they did it. Uh, I think the brother and the boyfriend did something really bad. Personally. Yeah, the boyfriend. Yeah, he's a bit. Yeah. And the brother. I hate to say it. I hope he's not listening. But. Uh, <laughs> I hope for brothers listening to a content marketing podcast. <laughs> you never know. You it never know. True. We're gonna we're gonna blast this out there. You're gonna get out there. You never know. And, and I'm definitely from an SEO perspective. I you know, I mean, other people, all kinds of people want to listen to this. So I'll, I'll track some some traffic from making a murder. <laughs> it's in there now. It's in there now. So we're, we're definitely gonna hyperlink Tag that. <laughs> All right. Well, we will have that discussion the next time I see you. And we need to, um, yeah. Yes, and uh, hopefully by that time they will be exonerated. And you <laughs> okay. Well, how about this? We'll bet our drinks whenever we see our Deal. dinner or whatever. Deal. Done. Okay. Deal. Whenever, whenever That's that totally, new lady yes. comes in, who I've heard is the best lawyer in America, takes over. Uh, hopefully she'll she'll be able to to get them off. We'll see. All right. But. To loop that back around that last question, tell everybody how they can uh, <laughs> to learn from you, but not about then, don't pay, only on the PR and marketing stuff, not about her <laughs> wrong opinions of making a murder. Okay, or your wrong opinions. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, Spinsucks.com is the best place. It's easy to find, and everything's there. Okay, just Spinsucks.com. You can follow her from there. You can follow her on Twitter. Uh, you can sign up for her weekly uh, podcast and, and everything just right there. Yep, everything's there. All right, and buy your book, right? Well. Oh, buy my book. Yes. There you go. <laughs> All right, Jeannie. Well, till next time, I will be uh, looking forward to it, and thank you so, so much for your time. It's my, it's my pleasure. This was fun. All right, bye-bye. Bye.